here trying to help you. I'm here to give you what it took me 30, 30 years in ministry to get. Man, thank you very much. All right, let's get right into this word. Get your Bible. Let's go right into Colossians chapter number one. Colossians chapter number one. And we're going to get right into God's word. Uh, we are teaching starting today. As a matter of fact, there's going to be another teaching uh, that's going to come out of the teaching that we have been doing, giving thanks to the Father. We finished that last week. So we're just going back to this, and we're going to show you how we got to our next teaching. Last week, we talked about giving thanks to the Father. Colossians chapter 1, verse 9 through verse number 14. Colossians chapter 1, verse 9. I'm going to read out verse 12. Verse 12 out of the King James, to giving thanks to the Father, which has made us meet to be partake of the inheritance of the saints in light. We are reading that verse, but that is not going to be our teaching today. All right? We're going to pray. We're going to get right into God's word. And we're going to show you that God has given us a new series starting today. We want to give a shout out to all those people out there who are listening to us on Facebook this morning. I want to say good morning. Praise the Lord. So glad to have you this morning. All right. Let's get right into God's word. All those people who are celebrating this week, birthdays this week, uh, in the month of uh, August, we know we had tremendous amount of people celebrating birthday. Good morning. Good morning to you. Amen. All right. Let's get right into God's word. Heavenly Father, we thank you now for your Holy Spirit, for leading us, guiding us, teaching us, helping us to understand. Now we bless you. We praise you. We appreciate you. Thank you for the eternal word. Thank you for the eternal spirit. Thank you for your eternal inheritance. We give you all the praise and all the glory. Bless your name, Father. Praise your name. And we give glory to your name. In the name of Jesus, our Lord, we pray all the way with that prayer said, Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, let's get right into God's word. Because we want to really take this morning to take you into our next service. Uh, our next series of teaching. This is volume one, part one. All right? This is a brand new teaching. Volume one, part one. All right? All right. Now. Last week, on the giving thanks to the Father, we gave you two things. We're going to take you to that right now, and then you're going to be able to see them from last week. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Now, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 came out of Ephesians 5. So let's go back first uh, to the book of Ephesians chapter 5, verse 17. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 17. Let's go back to that verse first. Ephesians chapter number 5 and verse 17. This is what the word of the Lord says. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the word of the Lord is. Be not unwise, but understanding what the word of the Lord is. That is what we talked about last week. Wherefore, be not unwise, but understanding what what the will of the Lord is. All right? Now, let's go down to verse number 20, because verse number 20 is going to tell you, Ephesians 5.20 is going to give you a hint of something we're going to be talking about in this series. Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. But let's go back and show you if Paul talked about uh, what is the will of the Lord is, we're going to use that for our subject. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 17. We're going to use that verse, all right? But our teaching will be called God's will, G-O-D apostrophe S, God's will is for us to be holy, all right? God will. What is God will? God will for us is to live holy. We use the word be holy, okay? God will is for us to be holy. All right? Now, I'm going to show you that uh, as I read uh, Ephesians out of, the good, out of the NLT. This morning, we're going to read out of the NLT what God will is. Ephesians chapter 5 out of the NLT. 
And this is what it says, Ephesians 5 and verse number 17. I'm going to start reading with verse 15 because it's telling you you have to live by the Holy Spirit power. But let's, let's, let's read this out of NLT. We read in Ephesians 5 and verse number 15. Be, so be careful how you live. Don't live like fools. Don't be like those who are wise. Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. So he told you don't live like fools. Live like those people who are wise. Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Then it says, don't act thoughtlessly, verse 17. But understand what the, what the Lord wants you to do. But understand what the Lord wants you to do. He said, don't be drunk with wine because that would ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, making music to the Lord in your hearts. And verse 20 says, give thanks for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So that verse told us what God wants us to do. Verse number 17, understand what the Lord wants you to do. All right, verse 17. So, but we are using it as God's will is for us to be holy. Volume 1, part 1. Now, the series, the series itself, taken from Ephesians 5, understanding the will of the Lord. That's your series. Understanding the will of the Lord. All right? We are still using Colossians chapter 1, 9 through 14. You can use that for your series. But the subject today will come out of Ephesians chapter 5, uh, right? Ephesians 5 and verse number 17, the subject. God's will is for us to be holy. The series can stay under Colossians chapter 1, 9 through 14. You can still use that for your series because... I'm going to show you as I go back there, you're going to see that same thing. Understanding what the, understand the will of the Lord is your series. Once again, understanding the will of the Lord is your series. The subject for the day is God's will is for us to be holy. All right, now let's take that and let's just go to work. Now, let's go over to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Now, so when I say understand, the whole thing is understanding. That's why the Bible said in Proverbs 4, 7, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. In, that's in the King James. But I'm going to read that out of the good news, uh, Proverbs 4, 7. But in the King James, it said wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. But in all you're getting, get understanding. Proverbs 4, 7 says... Uh, and out of the NLT said, wisdom, getting wisdom is the wisest thing you can do. Getting wisdom is the wisest thing you can do. All right? Wisdom is the principal thing. Get wisdom, but in all you're getting, get understanding, not the King James. All right, now, let's get into the word. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 1 through 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Verse 1 through 5. Let's go there, and we're going to be dealing out the King James and the NLT. Those are of our two books that we're reading. All right? So we read, we read that out of the King James first, then we're going to go to the NLT. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 1 through verse 5. Remember, we always read the King James first, and then we, should, we read it after the NLT next. Those are the two books we're going to read out today. Out of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 1 through verse 5. Verse 1 says, Furthermore then, we beseech you, brothers, and exalt you by the Lord Jesus, that you have received of the Lord, that, that as you have received of the Lord, all, how you ought to walk. Now remember the word is walk, because that's what we're going to deal with today. And to please God, so you would abound more and more. 
Isn't that something? How you ought to walk and how you ought to please God so you will abound more and more. Verse 2 says, you know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. Here it is. This is the will of God. Remember, the subject is God's will is for us to be holy. This is the will of God. Even your sanctification. Then he says that you should abstain from fornication. That every one of you should know how to possess his vessel out of King James. When I read out the NLT, you're going to see that word is called control. That every one of you should know how to manage, possess, control his vessel in sanctification and honor, not in the lust of concupiscence, even as the Gentile would know not God. All right, so let's read this same thing out of the NLT, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And you're going to pick this up, but I'm going to show you all of this is connected to words we're going to look at today. We're going to show you these words are connected to uh, how God's going to use you, preparation. We're going, to, we're going to show you that today. See, I'm going to show you, you got qualifications. I'm going to show you qualifications and preparations. All of that going to come through today. Now, once again, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. We're reading out of the Good News Bible. 1 Thessalonians chapter number 4. Uh, and we're going to go back to verse number 1. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 1. Finally, dear brothers and sisters, we urge you in the name of our Lord Jesus to live in a way that please God as you have, as he has taught, as we have taught you. You live this way already and we encourage you to do this, do even more. For, your, for you remember what we taught you by the authority of Jesus Christ, of authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. Then he's going to give you verse 3. We got to read out the NLT. He said, God is for you. 1 Thessalonians 4, 3, out of the NLT. God's will is for you to be holy. We're reading out of the NLT. Watch what it says again. God's will is for you to be holy. Then he's going to tell you why. God's will is for you to be holy, so stay away from all sexual sin. Watch what he's going to tell you why. Then each of you will control his own body. Now that's very important. He, um, he's showing you how, to, how you can control your own body. And then you'll be able to live in holiness and honor. So he said, 1 Thessalonians 4, 3, out of the NLT, God's will is for you to be holy, so stay away from all sexual sin. Then each of you will control his own body and live in holiness and honor, not in lust for passion like the pagans who don't even know God and his ways. All right, so this series is going to take us into a, a whole lot of things. This series is going to take us into prayer. We're going to teach you about prayer in this series. But we got to give you qualifications first. We got to have you prepared first. Because that's one of the greatest things I notice in people's lives. They want to pray. But until you learn how to live, then why is God, how is God going to answer your prayers? You want to live wrong, but you want God to hear your prayers. It don't work that way. All right, then we're going to go get into worship. We're going to get into praise. All these things we're going to get into, thanksgiving. But all those things I'm going to get into, we, got to, we backed up. See, we started all the way back. We backed all the way back up and found out what is God's will for your life. God's will for your life is that you will live holy. Let, let's show you what he showed Abraham. Let's go back. Let's go back to Genesis. I'm going to show you a couple of verses. I'm going to show you Genesis uh, chapter 17. And then I'm going to go and show you in Galatians 5, 18. Two verses. You want to put your, you want to get those two together. You want to go to Galatia, and you want to hold on to Galatia, chapter 5, and we're going to look at Galatia 5, 16. So let's get that, put, put a pencil there, and then go back to Genesis 17. Now, 
God has not spoken to Abraham since he was 75 years old, which that would be back in Genesis chapter 11. And God had told Abraham in Genesis chapter 12, uh, let's read that in Genesis 12 about the King James. We're going to do all this out of the King James. In Genesis chapter 12, and we're going to look at the first three verses. Then I'm going to go to Genesis 17, and let's, let's show you how, how was he able to bless Abraham. How was he able to give Abraham the things he had promised? See, what happened is we want the covenant to work in our lives, but we don't want to live right. So Genesis chapter 12 and verse 1 says, Now the Lord has said to Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from your kinfolk, and from the father's house, unto a land that I will show you. And I will make of you a great nation. These are the promises. I will bless you, Abraham. I will make your name great, Abraham, and you shall be a blessing. And verse 3 says, And I will bless them that bless you, and I will curse him that curse thee, and in you shall all the families of the earth be blessed. All right? Now, let's go show you Genesis 17. Now, Abraham at that time was 75 years old. Let's go to Genesis 17. Now he's 99. Not 75, 24 years later, now he's 99 years old. Watch what God is going to say to him now. And when Abram was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the almighty God. Watch what word he's going to use, walk. Walk before me and be thy perfect. Here it is, God shows up, and the first thing he tells Abraham is about his walk. He said, walk before me, Abraham, and be thy perfect. Now, I will make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. See, he reminded him of the covenant. Then verse 3 says, and Abraham fell on his face and God talked with him saying, as for you, Abraham, behold, my covenant is with thee and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Neither shall your name be called Abram, but thy name shall be called Abraham. Now he's going to make Abraham a father. Father of a great multitude. That's what Abraham means, a father of a great multitude. A father of many nations have I made thee. And then he says, I'll make thee exceedingly fruitful. Because that is what God is after in our life, is fruitful. All right? But you can't be fruitful until you be holy first. Be fruitful, and I will make thee nations of thee. Kings shall come out of thee. Verse number 7, And I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed after thee and their generation, for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. In verse 8, thy last verse. And I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land wherein thou art a stranger. Talking about the promised land, the land of Canaan. And he's going to tell them all the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. All right? Now, let's take this and see what Paul told. We're going to go to Galatia also, but let's go to 2 Corinthians. Let's see what Paul said to the church. The same thing that God told Abraham. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 14. We're going to stay with the King James. 2 Corinthians chapter number 6 and verse 14. See, it's, it's not hard. Otherwise, once God saved you, he qualified you. But now you got to live right if you're going to walk in the blessings of God. All right? Watch this. 2 Corinthians 6, 14. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Now, we're talking to the church that he has sanctified. Let me show you he sanctified him. Go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 11. Let's do that. Let's go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 11. See, he's already qualified you. But now you got to walk in the, in the covenant of the Lord, walk in the word of the Lord. You can't walk against what the word teaches. 1 Corinthians 6, 11 says, and such were some of you. But you are washed, 
You are sanctified. You are justified. Now, before the cross, they were washed, sanctified, justified, watch this, in the name of the Lord Jesus. After the cross, you were washed, sanctified, justified by the Spirit of our God. I hope you can understand that because he's showing both people, Jews and Gentiles, which were the body of Christ. First was the church of God, then the body of Christ. Church of God was saved in the name of Jesus Christ. We are saved by the Spirit of the Lord. All right, now, let's look at 1 Corinthians 6. Keep going. Go down to verse 15. Because he's already talked to them about being saved. They was already saved. They were sanctified by the Spirit. But now, he's going to talk to them in verse 15, 1 Corinthians 6, 15, how to live. So the key is, my responsibility as your pastor, not only to teach you how to be saved, but how to live. So you get saved, then the Holy Ghost is in you. Now his responsibility is to teach you how to live. All right, here we go. 1 Corinthians 6, 15. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of an harlot? God forbid. What, know ye not that, your, that, that he which is joined to an harlot is one body? Two says he shall be one flesh. But he that's joined to the Lord is one spirit. Watch what he says in verse 18. Flee fornication. It says in the NLT it means run from sexual sin. Flee fornication. Because what? Every sin that a man doeth is without the body. But he that committed fornication, you sins against your own body. Now what does that mean? I'm going to show you in this teaching you are grieving the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit lives in the body. You are quenching the Spirit. You are neglecting the Spirit. See, that's why I'm going to go through these things that are so very important. All right, now, then he's going to say to them in verse number 19. We're in 1 Corinthians 6, 19. So he's going to say, what? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? He's saying, look, your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God. And listen, you are not your own anymore. You are bought with a price. See, God bought us, redeemed us with his own blood. You don't belong to yourself no more. Your body is not your, your own anymore. So that's why he sins against your own body. For you are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. And in your spirit, which are God. It, your body, your spirit, everything belongs to God. This is God's house now. It's not your house anymore. All right? That's how you understand when you're saved. All right. Now, with that in mind, let's go over to Galatians. And let's show you the Galatians chapter 5. See, all these, are, all these things go together. That series that I taught on YouTube, I hope you go back and get on podcast and go back and look, read that Romans chapter 12. Renew your mind. I'm telling you, that's an awesome series. Because once you renew your mind, now you're a new creation in Christ. That's what it means by being saved, you're renewing your mind. You become a new creation in Christ. Once that happens, now you got to learn how to walk. Now this is where so many people err. You know, they, they don't know how to live. You got to live like who you are. The Bible said, be holy. God made you holy. Now you got to live holy. All right. Now let's go to Galatians chapter 5, and verse 16. This I say then, walk in the Spirit. See, this is what you have to do now. You are in the Spirit. Now you got to walk in the Spirit. Like when you was in the flesh, you walk out of the flesh. Now you're in the Spirit, you got to walk in the Spirit. So, in Galatians 5, 16, said, This I say, walk in the Spirit. You shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Verse 17, For the flesh lusts against the Spirit, and the Spirit lusts against the flesh. These are contrary one to the other. So you cannot do the thing that you would. See? But if you be led of the Spirit, you are not under law. Down in verse 25, here's another one. Verse 25 says, if we live in the Spirit, 
Let us also walk in the Spirit. So he's challenging you. You're saying you live in the Spirit, so let's walk in the Spirit. That's what he's talking about. Now, with that in mind, we are understanding what the will of the Lord is. Well, the will of the Lord is that you would be holy. Because none of this other stuff is going to work if you don't be holy. God wants you to be holy. I want to talk to this, this camera right here. God wants you to be holy. Say that with me. God want you to be holy. Now, if God wants you to be holy, why? Because you're the temple of the Lord. God lives in you. He cannot fulfill his purpose in you if you don't. So the first thing God does is make you holy. All right? Now, I want you to write down that word sanctification because when I read 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, in the last verse there, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, it says in verse 3, this is the will of God, even your sanctification. 1 Thessalonians 4 and 3. This is the will of God, even your sanctification. All right. So let's give you some definition of what sanctification is. You at home, you want to write some of these things down, you can. The word's to sanctify. So when, when you say that you are sanctified, this is not something you did. I just want to make sure you understand that. Sanctification is not a, 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 something you do. I know we, we got people who believe that you can't wear this, you can't drink this, and that sanctify you. No, no. Sanctification means to purify, means to cleanse, means to make holy. Now remember, God does this to you. He sanctified us. He purified us. He cleansed us. He made us holy. God made us free from guilt. See, all of that is how God saved us. See? Now, this sanctify means to prepare for divine service. See, the key is, if you're going to be used by God, you got to be holy. You, you can't, God can't allow the, the anointing of the Spirit of the living God to operate on your life and, you, and all the power of God to operate through you if you don't live holy. You got to be holy, but you got to also live holy. All right, so with that in mind, we're going to go look at some other things because this all got to happen of God. Look at Romans 5, 14, just one verse. Romans chapter 5. And verse number 14. See, all this stuff is what God does. Romans chapter number. That's not the verse I want. Romans chapter 5. And verse 14. Not, I, that's not the verse I want. I want uh, 1 Corinthians 5. I think I wrote down the wrong book here. 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Let's go there. I wrote that down wrong. 1 Corinthians 5. Yeah, 1 Corinthians 5. Uh, that's not the verse. Anyway, I'll think about it in a minute, but I, was, I had wrote down a verse showing how uh, what God does, to, what God does to us, and uh, I got the wrong verse. I'll find it. I get it. Believe it'll come back. But right now, let's go to First First Thessalonians chapter five. Let's do that first. First Thessalonians chapter number five. First Thessalonians chapter number five. When you get this, just say amen. First Thessalonians chapter 5, because I want, to, I want to show you something here. Yeah, when I rewrote my message, I wrote, wrote the scripture down. All right, let's go down to First Thessalonians chapter 5. We'll get there. First Thessalonians chapter 5. 
Now, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, we're dealing with what the will of the Lord is, remember? Now, these are some things we're going to teach on. The 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 16 says, Rejoice evermore. Rejoice evermore. Then we're going to teach on verse 17, Pray without ceasing. See, those are things we're going to teach on in this series. Then in verse 18, In everything give thanks. Now, why are we going to teach on giving thanks? Because this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So he gave you some things. Rejoicing evermore. Praying without ceasing. Giving thanks. This is the will of God in Christ Jesus. We're going to get to that in this series. But it does not do any good for us to have all this stuff and we never did principle number one, be holy. For this is the will of God even your sanctification. All right, so this word sanctification, I gave you the word to sanctify. To sanctify means to purify, to cleanse, to make holy, to make free from sin and guilt, to prepare for divine service. That's to sanctify. But let's show you sanctification. Sanctification is the act of making holy. Sanctification is the act of God's grace by which the affections of men are purified and exalted to a supreme love to God. So God brings you to a place so you can love God. All right? Sanctification. Now, I'm going to give you some in sanctification. Let, let's go look at Romans 15, 14. Let's give you some of these. Romans chapter number 15. I know you might not be jumping up and down this morning, but, but this, is going, this is some good stuff. Romans 15, 14. Romans 15, 14. Now, Romans chapter 15, verse 14, going to show you you are sanctified by the Holy Ghost. Now, I'm doing this because we got, a, we got a lot of churches, we got a lot of people in churches, they think they're sanctified because of what they wear. That's not sanctification. Sanctification is what the Lord did for my soul so you can be in the presence of God. Sanctification is God qualifying you. Sanctification is God preparing you, okay? So let's look at this. Romans 15, verse 14. I myself also am persuaded of you, my brethren, that you also are full of goodness, filled with all knowledge. So when God said be filled with the Spirit, this is what he's talking about. Because how can you tell a person that's born of the Spirit to be filled with the Spirit? And that's why we err in the body of Christ. We think, uh, you can be born of the Spirit, and then now you need to be filled with the Spirit. You're right, but he's talking about Romans 15 and verse uh, 14. I'm going to back up to verse 13, Romans 15, 13. Romans chapter 15 and verse number 13. Are you ready for it? Romans 15, 13. It says, now the God of hope fill you with all joy. We said, well, okay, I got to be filled with the Spirit. Yeah, I know, but that's what he's talking about. He's talking about the fill with all joy and peace, fill with peace. See, he's not talking about the person of the Holy Spirit. He's talking about the fruit of the Spirit. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound, watch this, in hope, through the power of the Holy Spirit. And I myself, Paul, also persuaded you, my brother, that you also be full of goodness, filled with all knowledge, able to admonish one another. Nevertheless, brothers, I have written the more boldly unto you in some sort as putting you in mind because of the grace that's given to me of God, that I should be the minister of Jesus Christ to you Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God that the offering up of the Gentile may be, watch this, acceptable, being sanctified by the Holy Ghost. So he told you how you are sanctified. You are sanctified by the Holy Ghost. So when God gives you the Holy Spirit, when Christ comes inside of you, he sanctifies you. That's how you're sanctified. Let's show you that just one verse in 1 Corinthians 1 and 2. 
You and Romans go forward. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse number 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 2. Unto the church of God, which is at Corinth, to them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus. Them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus. So he told you, how are you sanctified? When God put you in Christ, he sanctified you. To be sanctified means to set apart for the purpose of God. So when God saved you, he sanctified you. He put you in Christ Jesus. All right? He put you in Christ. All right? Now, let's look at some more. Uh, 1 Corinthians one thirty. why are you there? 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30. See, this, this word of God is filled with knowledge. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse number 30. And verse number 30, 1 Corinthians 1 and 30. But of him are you in Christ Jesus, which of God, watch this, is made on us wisdom. So Christ is our wisdom. He's made on us wisdom. He is our righteousness. Watch this. And sanctification and redemption. So Christ is our redemption. Christ is our sanctification. Christ is our righteousness. See, Christ is our wisdom. So when God puts you in Christ, you are dead. Your life now is hid in God. Now Christ, who is your life? All right? That's what we got to understand. Now he said that according to it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. See, that's why we're going to get to the praise part of it. We're going to praise the Lord because he the one made us who we are. Look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. I'm going to give you a solid hour of word. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 13. But we are bound. I'm reading this out of the King James Version. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 13. We are, but we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren. Beloved of the Lord. Watch what it says. Because God has, from the beginning, watch this, chosen you the salvation, watch this, through sanctification of the Spirit. Once again, through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. So you got to believe the gospel of Christ, which is the truth, and the sanctification of the Spirit. This is how God saved us. Well, until he called you by our gospel. Remember, God called you to come to him for sonship, and for fellowship. The sonship is relationship. So God called you to him for relationship and then fellowship. All right? So verse, two, verse 14 says, Well, until he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. What a, what a powerful verse this, this teaching is because we have to understand. That's why he said understanding the word of the Lord. Understanding the word of the Lord. Well, if I'm understanding the word of the Lord, what is the word understanding? Understanding is exact knowledge. I got to know the word of the Lord for my life. Number one, I know what God wants for me. Number one is to be holy. Number one, what God wants me to do is to be sanctified in Christ. Justified. Made righteous. Sanctified. Christ become my wisdom. Become my righteousness become my justification, my sanctification. See, all this is Christ. That's what God wants. So God, when you, are, when you can understand the new covenant, that means you have exact knowledge as or like the writer Paul. See, when you read the writing, you know what Paul meant. You know what Paul meant when he wrote this. That's what understanding means. To know what Paul knew and to understand what Paul understood. Having full knowledge. What an awesome word. Having full knowledge. All right. Now, with the, all of that in mind, we're going to get into some things now because I'm trying to get you 
first of all, I want to take you into the thing because you got to know what the will of the Lord is. And to be able to understand God's word, you got to understand the will of the Lord. Let, let's, go, let's go to a couple more. Let's go to Philippians. Philippians 4, and let's look at verse 8. Let's go there first. After, after Ephesians, we got Philippians 4 and verse number 8. Philippians chapter 4, verse number 8. This is an awesome thing. Remember what God did with Abraham. When God saved Abraham, the first thing he said to Abraham was, walk before me and be thy person. So it's not enough to say, okay, God saved me. He gave me the Holy Spirit. Now I'm, I'm his son. Okay, now what about the fellowship? See, there's relationship, but there's also fellowship. And if I'm going to fellowship with the Holy Spirit, then I got to make sure that I walk in the Spirit. Because if I walk in the Spirit, I will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Walking in the Spirit is what God's going to want us to get to. All right? Now, let's, I'm going I'm to show you this sanctification because I'm going to show you why it's so important. Uh, as a matter of fact, Philippians chapter number 4. Let's go there first. Philippians chapter number 4, verse 8. It said, finally, my brothers, Philippians 4, eight, finally, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are, are, are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good report, if there be any virtue, that's where he's going. If there be any virtue, think on these things. What things? Those things which you have both learned and received and heard. Watch what Paul says. You got to walk in these same things which you have both learned, received, and heard, and seen in me. Do. And the God of peace shall be with you. What an awesome thing. I, you, I, my life, what Paul said, if you one of my sons, this is what Paul said, if you one of my son, then you ought, I ought to see my life in you. And Because he's taking you somewhere. He's telling you in, in Philippians 4 and verse 8, finally, my brother, whatsoever things are true, Honest, just, pure, lovely. Whatsoever things are good report. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. The, those things which you have both learned and received of Paul, heard of Paul, seen in Paul, he said, this is what you do. And then the God of peace shall be with you. What a powerful statement. What a powerful statement. That's why I love this ministry. That's why I love the ministry of the Apostle Paul. That's why I love the new covenant. Okay? But, but let's, go, let's go and show you something that I don't, I want to make sure you got, I want to make sure you understand because this is very good stuff I'm giving to show you. Let's go back to chapter 15 of the book of Acts. Let's show you when, the, when did this come up. Acts chapter 15. Let's go back there. We're still in the King James Version. But let's go back and show you. When did this come up? In Acts chapter 15, God gave the Apostle Paul at that time, we're going to show you at that time the big man was Peter, James, and John. But God gave them the instruction for the Gentiles that they did not have to keep the law. And I told you the law was water baptism, the law was washing feet, the law was circumcision, the law was offering up animal sacrifice, the law was communion, uh, bread on the table, wine on the table, all that's law. Now, I'm going to show you in the Word, none of that was given to the body of Christ. None of that was given to the Gentiles. None. So pay attention. Tell somebody to pay attention because I'm getting ready to show you. None of that. All that came from churches who want to be different from the Bible. 
Acts 15, 1. The Bible does not, let me say it again, the Bible does not teach you have to be water baptized. The Bible does not teach you in the new covenant that you have to be, wash feet, you have to be circumcised, you have to eat the bread and the wine off the table. The Bible, the new covenant does not teach you that. That's what I'm about to show you. Acts chapter 15 and verse 1. Certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, except you be circumcised after the man of Moses, you cannot be saved. Now, these, these brothers came down to the church at Antioch, which was Gentile, a lot of them, and said, well, if you haven't been circumcised after the man of Moses, you still ain't saved. So people today will tell you, well, if you're not baptized in water in Jesus' name, you still ain't saved. See, that's, that's what people do. They're adding to the Bible. But let's see what the Bible said. Now, if somebody teaches you this in the churches, what did your Bible say? Now, watch what your Bible says. From the book of Acts, chapter 15, we're going down to verse 19. We're going to pick this up because... Now James has begun to talk. They're in the council where they have met up. Now the council from Antioch, Paul and Silas, Paul and Barnabas, these guys had gone down. The Bible told you, Paul and Barnabas, I'm sorry. Paul and Barnabas in verse number 2. When therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation, with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem to the apostles and elders about this question. So now here's Paul and Barnabas go to Jerusalem, going to meet Peter, James, and John. Each one of them going to speak on what the Gentiles should do. Remember, our salvation is built up on the apostles and the elders. The apostles, the see. You, you, you don't build your church up on denomination. It's built up on what the people here in the Bible did. All right, now watch what happened to them. In verse number, Acts chapter 15, and we want to look at verse, Acts, Acts number 15 is where we're at right now. But let's go to verse number 19. That's where we want to go. Acts 15, 19. Wherefore my sentence is, now this is what James is, is getting to, that we trouble not them. He's talking about the Gentiles. Which from among the Gentiles are turned to God. Let us not trouble them. Now, remember if you study Paul's writing, he'll tell you that some have troubled you. This is what he's talking about here. But that, he, but that we write to them. This is what James is saying. If you back up in what it started out, you will see in verse 13, after they had held their peace, James answered. Now, we know James is talking. So back in verse 20, we back in verse 20, Acts 15, 20. But that we write to them. Here's what they, here's what they wrote. That they, number one, abstained from pollution of idols. Number one, abstain from pollution of idols. Don't worship idols. You shouldn't have a God from another country in your house. You shouldn't have a statue that other countries worship their God in your house and you're a Christian. And that's what people do. They go to different countries and they see gods of that country. To them, that is just a little idol, but it's their God. So you, you don't supposed to have that in your house. You're a Christian. Don't forget what I said. Because spirits follow God's idols. Just remember what I'm saying. That's why we worship the true and the living God, so the Holy Spirit can fill the church. Well, what happened when you got spirits, idols, then the spirit's going to follow the idol. <laughs> Wise up. All right. Now, we're reading in verse number 20. We're reading Acts 15 and 20. But this is what James said, but that we write to them 
that number one, they abstain from the pollution of idols. Number two, abstain from fornication. Now watch what he gave you what you have to do. Now all the way through Paul's teaching, this is what you're going to find in Paul's teaching. Abstaining from idols, abstaining from fornication, and from things strangled. Really he's talking about animals that died of themselves. From things strangled. Because the blood never been let out of the animal. That's what he's talking about. And then last, from blood. So he told you not to eat blood. Now just think about what God told you not to do. But what we'll do is, we'll go out and say, no, nah, we're going to have bread on the table and the wine. And uh, we, then we get up and we'll say the, the wine is the blood. He told you not to drink the blood. But we'll call the blood on the wine the blood, and we'll, we'll see. He told you not to drink blood. Now we know that that wine ain't blood, but just think about what I'm saying. We are doing everything God told us not to do. He did not tell you about circumcision. He did not tell you had to be circumcised. He did not tell you to eat the the bread on the table, the wine on the table. He did not tell you about water baptism. He told you what to do. For well, see, churches don't build their they church on the Bible, they build their church on their denominations. Ephesians 2.20. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll get there in just a moment. All right, we'll read that right now. We'll come right back here. Let's look at Ephesians 2.20. We we're built up on the apostles. Right. Let's go and show you that. Ephesians chapter 2. When you get this, say amen. Ephesians chapter 2, we are built up on the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Well, if a church is built up on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, he's talking about what they taught, what they gave us. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. So if our church is built, see, you can build your church on whatever you want to build, but it's going to fall if it's on religion and tradition of men. All right, let's move on. So that's how the church is built. All right, let's move on. Ephesians chapter 15. All right, now we just read to you Ephesians 2.20. All right. We're in Acts chapter 15 now. And verse 20. Let's go show you those four things that, that they said for them not to do. But that we write to them that they, number one, abstain from the pollution of idols. Number two, from fornication. So what happens? The pastor don't tell you about fornication. But he tell you about you got to eat the bread on the table. See, he doesn't tell you about fornication, but you can foot wash. See, he don't tell you about do not commit fornication, but he tell you about water baptism. See, he's telling you about all this stuff. That's not what God told you. God's will for your life is to be holy. Let me say it again. God's will for your life is be holy. Watch what he's, watch what he's centering around here. But he write to them, let's write to them, to abstain from pollution of idols, abstain from fornication, abstain from things strangled, abstain from blood. And then it says in verse 21, Moses of old has in every city of them that preach him the law being read in the synagogue every Sabbath day. But let's read it on down. Then verse number 22, they're going to write a letter to the church at Antioch. Then please the apostles and elders with the whole church to send chosen men of them of their own company to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas, namely Judas, surnamed Barnabas, and Silas, chief men among the brothers. So all these guys, Barnabas and Silas and Paul, they all now get together and go back to Antioch. But they got letters signed by James and Peter and John, and they wrote letters by them at this manner. They, here's the letter. 
the apostles and elders and brothers send greeting to the brethren which are of the Gentiles in Antioch, Syria, and Cilicia. Here's the letter. Thank God we still got the letter. Verse 24. For as much as we have heard, back in verse 1, certain which went out from us, from Jerusalem, have troubled you with words, subverting your soul, saying you must be circumcised and keep the law of Moses, to whom, watch this, we gave no commandment. See, they didn't give no commandment. They didn't give no commandment of them being baptized in water. They didn't give no commandment for them to be circumcised. That came from people within the church who wanted to be soloed. Didn't come from Peter, James, and John, the apostle of the church. Watch what Paul, James said. It seemed, it seemed good. This is James. It seemed good to us being assembled with one accord to send chosen men to you with your own beloved Barnabas and Paul. Now remember Paul said, I received of the Lord. This is what he's talking about. Men and brothers have hazarded their lives for the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. We have sent therefore again Judas, Silas, who shall also tell you the same thing by mouth that Paul and Barnabas going to tell you. For it seemed good, listen to me real good. This ain't no, this ain't, well, that's what Paul said. Listen to what it says, said the Holy Ghost. Listen to what it says. It seemed good in verse 28 to the Holy Ghost and to us to lay upon you, watch this, no greater burden than these necessary things. He named the four things. And he's going to name the four things again. Can't you see God never told you about no water baptism in the church? He never told you about circumcision in the church. Never told you about bread and wine on the table. Never told you about foot washing. That's not what God told you to do. God says the will of God is that you will be holy. You can't be holy by water baptism. You can't be holy by eating bread off the table. You can't be holy by foot washing. You can't be holy by circumcision. You can't be holy by offering up animal sacrifice. That's what they did in the Old Testament. Look at verse number 29. Here's another thing. And that you abstain. Watch what verse 28 says again. It seemed good to the Holy Ghost and to us to lay upon you no burden, no greater burden than these necessary things that you, number one, he's going to go over them again, that you abstain from meats offered to idols. So otherwise, if you have gone to the, the, the marketplace and they got an animal that they just took down from an altar that was offered to an idol, then they said, look, don't purchase it. You're in the Gentiles market. They offer that to their God. Now, don't you go in there and buy that because they're going to tell you that's the one. That's what they did. They offered those animals on the altar to their gods, and then they turned around and sold them in the marketplace. And verse number 29, that you abstain from meats offered to idols. Number two, from blood. Number three, from things strangled. And number four, from fornication. Once again, in the same chapter, he's going to say, for which if you keep yourselves, you shall do well, farewell. So when they were dismissed from the, from the meeting, they came to Antioch, and when they had gathered the mother two together, they delivered, watch this, the epistle. They delivered the epistle, which when they had read, they rejoiced for the consolation. And Judas and Silas, being prophets, also themselves exhorted the brethren with many words and confirmed them. After they had tarried their space, they were let go in peace for the brethren unto the apostles. Notwithstanding, it pleased Silas, abide there still Paul also and Barnabas, 
continue in Antioch teaching and preaching the word of the Lord with many others also. So that's, that was the story. So when you read the Apostle Paul message and you go over here to 1 Corinthians chapter, chapter 11, see, this is what we do. Then we go over here to 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and we, we forget what God told them back in the book of Acts. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, and Paul has said, told you in 1 Corinthians 11 what he received of the Lord. What he received of the Lord. We don't want to know what he received. We don't know what Paul received in verse 23. Let's just put that on the screen. 1 Corinthians 11, 23. Let's see what he received. I'm going to give you two verses. For I received of the Lord. Now watch what he says. I received of the Lord that which I also, watch this, delivered to you. Well, what did Paul receive of the Lord? He received the epistle, the letter that was written by Peter, James, and John in the council of the Lord that was signed by Peter, James, and John, and also Paul and Silas and Barnabas. They all was there in the elders of the church. They all got together and they, they came together by the Holy Ghost. This is what we need to do in the church of the Gentiles or the body of Christ. I received of the Lord that which also was delivered, I delivered to you. See, this is what I, what I sent to you. Then he's going to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. He's going to say it again. 1 Corinthians 15. Paul is talking about spiritual things. Most churches are talking about natural things. That's what the problem is. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare to you. Watch this. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I preach to you, which also you have received, and wherein you stand, watch this, by which also you are saved. What's he talking about? What I received back there in 1 Corinthians eleven twenty three, 23, Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. Then he says, by which also you are saved, if you keep in memory what I preach to you, unless you have believed in vain. I deliver to you, first of all, watch this, that which I also received. Well, when did Paul receive it? Acts chapter 15. See, he received the revelation from the Lord, and this baptism was not in the revelation. Foot wash was not in the revelation. Bread and wine on the table was not in the revelation. Circumcision was not in the revelation. Offering animal sacrifice, all that was not in the revelation. Paul said, I delivered you first of all that also which I received, how Christ died for our sins according to the scripture. He was buried and then he rose again the third day of Christ.